Hi folks, this is a very, very special unboxing. Um, yeah, look at the size of this box, <laughs> okay. And uh, to do it, um, to do this unboxing, I will need to do a bunch of it off screen because I don't really have a good setup to be able to flip my camera down. Um, I'm filming on my iPad. So, but I'm just going to film this whole thing. And I don't know if it's going to make for scintillating video. I may not upload this. I may cut it. Um, okay. But I figured I should capture this. So, when you see what it is, you'll understand why the, why the box is so big. Um, okay, one item. He mentioned that he was sending me a surprise, too. So I'm not expecting three items, but it looks like there are three items here. Two. And three. Okay, this is... This is the thing, but we're going to look at the other two first. They're both books, I believe. One is, I know, a book. The other, I think, is a book. Um, he mentioned something. I, I included $20 for shipping. That was the original request, but I, it cost more for him to ship it with the packing he did and with insurance. So I've been trying to reach this eBayer. Um, really nice guy. I've been trying to reach him so that I can reimburse him the extra amount. Okay. All right. So this is one of the books. This is, so this is a Victorial Key to the Tarot. There's another one inside. I'm wondering, I'm thinking this is a later date. No, this is 1911. Okay. This is just, this is just, look at this spine. This is in beautiful, beautiful shape. This is the Rider and Sons 1911 version of the Victorial Key to the Tarot. I have to do some research. It's got the black and white line drawings. I have to do some research into this. Okay, so this is one book. I'm not sure what this book then is. Um, he's, this guy, I don't, he also, yeah, I'm going to have to, I owe him more money. Um, oh my God. Oh, I owe him more money for sure. He sent me the other thing. Oh, oh I'm going to cry. He also had this listed. This is A.E. Waits, The Mysteries of Magic. These are beautiful copies. Oh, my Lord. So this is the first American edition of, price $2, of A.E. Waits' digest of the writings of Eliphas Levy. So it's his, I think he first published this in 1889. Then the DeLorence's American edition was in 1909. Um, copies of the 1889, I think that's the right date. Um, the British edition are, are quite collectible. I, I um, this, this is actually less common, not, not as valuable because it's not the first edition, but um, Oh my God, it's a beautiful edition. Okay. Okay, guys. This is the thing. This is the thing. And uh, given how generous he was to include those other two books, I'm imagining that this will, this will not disappoint. This is kind of a once in a lifetime, my hands are shaking, once in a lifetime purchase. Do any of you know what this is yet? Can you guess? Can you guess what this is? Tissue paper? 
That's actual tissue paper protecting. <sighs> My hands are shaking. <laughs> protecting the original tissue wrapped, the key to the tarot, the original 1910 edition of what would later become a little white book. It's tissue wrap, folks. This is the original tissue. This is a Pam A, folks. This is a Pam A. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, it has a little foxing around the edges of the cards. Of course it does. Of course it does. How do we know it's a Pam A? Um, so do you see how the, the red is produced in the table? How it's lines? Okay. So I'm just going to show all of the cards, I guess. God. We'll know for sure when we get to the lovers. So, the cardstock. Now, there were two editions of the Pam A. So, the Pam A produced between 1910 and 1920. I'm thinking that's accurate. Um, I'm pretty sure I have those dates right. And there were two editions of it. The dish difference between the two is the cardstock, and since I don't have two both editions in my hands, I can't tell. But I would say this is quite thick cardstock. This is thick, like um, mass market edition of the um, um, the Wild Unknown thick, like really thick cardstock, I, I, not laminated. It's it's soft. Yep, yeah, this is a Pam A, folks. The Pam A and the Pam B, I mean, I think that the Pam B did also came in additions in a red box that included um, the, um, the key to the tarot. But, so the eyes are closed. And if you look at the cross hatching in the mountain, those are tells. Um, so yeah, foxing around the edges, you see the, the bleed through. This is what the backs look like, the crackle back that we know and love. Look at the cross hatch, uh, the line drawing in the strength. So not the blotchy, oh my God, look at how pretty those colors are. That dusky blue, not the blotchy um, stuff that you'll see in the Pam B. This is a beautiful deck. I mean, you know, this deck is 110 years old. This deck is 110 freaking years old. Um, I don't think it was ever used. The box, I mean, this box has wear, but not a lot. Oh, it says something on the back. DWP 31 Mayfield. Something. Something London, West England. That must be an address. Okay, if anyone knows what that means. Oh my God, my God. Frank, the, the eBayer who sold this to me, you, got, you are an amazing human being. You're just so generous. This is a beautiful deck. You described it perfectly. I uh, am not surprised that it is in the quality you suggested, but I am thrilled. So do you notice the extra squiggle by the uh, 
the 19 above the sun. So that's the oh shit squiggle <laughs> that got fixed uh, in later editions. But this is this is it, guys. This is it. Oh my lord. Yeah, it's you know it's really what's distinctive. You can see it. Um, you can see it in the faces. What's distinctive? Can you see it? Oh. I'm trying to see if I can. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to. There we go. I'm trying to get my iPad to focus on the line drawings in the faces so that they're that's how those color blocks are created um, strange sort of rosy cheek on the brown dressed woman in the three of cups wow I mean, you know, probably this isn't as thrilling for you guys to watch <laughs> because you know these cards and these are just really, you know, nice, clear versions of the cards. So all of the clarity, no, that's not true. Much of the clarity is created, like here it's in the green of the lawn with where, again, I don't think you can see it, where lines it, you can sort of see it in the in there in the in the um, side the cut uh, the cliff face not cliff I don't know how do you call that the the shore where its vertical lines are creating the color blocking but then that's not how block the blocks of blue or yellow in these cards are so Occasionally that's the technique. You can see it in the man's jacket, but not always. I mean, this does make me think that the colors, I would say the Fool's Dog app, if any of you have the Fool's Dog app, I would say the colors in the Fool's Dog app are super close to the Pam A as I'm seeing it here in a 110 year old deck. So let's just Let's just test my memory. The Pam, the Pam A is, I believe, yeah, it's the Pam A that's used for the Fool's Dog. So check out, for instance, the Knight of Cups, just because that's the card I happen to be looking at. The Knight of Cups in the Fool's Dog app. It's showing up a little bit. There we go. A little bit brighter on my screen. Um, yeah, it's a little brighter. The Fool's Dog app colors are a bit brighter, a bit more saturated. Let me say that a bit more saturated than the colors in um, this Pam A. Let me get out. This is the, based on the Pam A, the AE weight. Yeah, pretty damn close. Pretty darn close. So this is the AE weight. This is my brand new Pam A. You notice, um, again, more saturation. So I would say, and it's hard to know because, yeah, and now I'm comparing it with the Fool's Dog app, which I think the coloration of the Fool's Dog app is beautiful. I would say that I love the Fool's Dog app. I would say that the, however, that the AE, premium AGM Mueller is probably closer to the colors. Let me see if that's true. I had felt like the yellows were 
Yeah, it's... Mm. Yeah. A little bit brighter. A little more saturated, but really close. All right, so the AE weight, I think, you know, looking at... Again, you know, hard to know when you have a hundred and uh, ten years gap. But... Wow. Oh my God, look at this page of the cups. This is just... Oh, it's so beautiful. Whoops, where's the Queen of Cups? Oh man, I hope I'm not missing any cards. That would be really depressing. Oh, I passed the Queen of Cups. Whew. Okay, page, knight, queen. I think I should pay a little more attention <laughs> as I'm turning these over. King of Swords, Queen of Swords. Oh my lord, these are fucking beautiful. Yeah, some of these, like this ace, I mean, it's, it's almost perfect. It has almost no foxing. I am aware, as I do this, that in some ways this is just not even that great a video. This is like Lisa looking at a nice deck of cards. Oh, okay, here's here's one that is not not perfect. It's got a little damage on it. It's got a a um, hole in the color there. That's not a that's not the deck being damaged. That looks like a printing issue. Yeah. You know, the, um, things that I've just never really noticed much of, like notice the pattern on his tunic. Not something I thought about. The black in the cards that have black backgrounds, the dark cards have some flaws in them and that vertical line going through, right? It's just the printing isn't complete. And, and there's, you know, the borders, the bottom border here is really big. The, the printing, the offset is not perfect. One thing I'm noticing is the corners are just, they are perfect. So this, however the However, these cards were cut, and as I'm looking at the crackle back, it's clear that these were cut from a sheet, and the sheet was printed with this crackle back all the way around, so it's not a uniform crackle back image. My guess is, yeah, so one of the differences with the crackle back on the AE weight is it is a uniform image, like they reproduced a crackleback image and put it on all the decks. Do you see what I mean? It's not like they had a sheet of whatever, 78 cards and then cut them out. But the older printing methods, right? When you print out a sheet of cards, you, you print it on both sides. That's what we see here. Oh, it's just beautiful. I mean, you know, there's some blemishes that most of them look like printing issues. And certainly uneven borders. I can't believe I own the Pam A. Oh my God. Okay, the 10 of Pentacles. 
is a really different card here. Look at the clarity. Wow, it becomes clear that he's wearing a freaking cloak. I mean, I guess, obviously, he's wearing a cloak. I'm talking about the, the you know, the grandfather. And look at that cascade of blue on this side. So, you know, this is a card that is, in so many modern decks, really, really hard to read. You know, in the AE, the premium AE weight, it's also fairly clear. But I think if you contrast the two, the green is a lighter green in the original Pame. The blue of the child's outfit is a brighter blue. Again, this is this is the original Pame. This is the the modern premium, the modern one. The dogs are lighter. So the greater saturation in images that we see in the modern version contributes to this way in which this card is so busy you can't read it. But not so much this one. It's a lot easier to read. So that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I would say. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm rambling, guys. I'm sorry. You know, I hope this video isn't really boring. And I may not even upload it because, um, you know, this feels very... Um, momentous to own this deck. So these ones, is that right? I was going to say the ones in the that I'm coming to now feel like they're in slightly more mint quality, but I don't know that that's true actually. Oh wow. The card I love to hate, the five of wands. Wow. Okay, I'm not gonna shuffle these. <laughs> oh my lord. It's, I, they really, they don't smell like much. I think the, the guy who sold them to me was describing them as new old stock, you know, meaning that these were basically you know, driven by a little old lady in Pasadena only on Sundays. But here you go, guys. Oh, my God. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, universe. I will cherish this that has been delivered to me. Uh, I will cherish it. Wait, and we have to start it. Oh. Okay, so this is, it came shipped in this box, priority, $22. I don't know why it was so expensive, but I'm really grateful that the vendor sent it that way. So this is either a Pam B or a Pam C. It's got, so this, this, um, up through, so this is between 1940 and 1965, the playing card stamp, that the tax revenue stamp. So it was sold in this country somewhere between 1940 and 1965. Ooh, all right. Wow. I think this is a I'm thinking this is a Pam C. No? A, maybe a Pam B. 
Whoa. Okay, it's got the blotchy, the blotchy face. These are, these cards are in really nice shape. They're much more yellow and thinner paper than the Pam A. I'm still waiting to get to the point. Wow. Some of these are a little dirty. This is really in nice shape. And I have to collate it to make sure all the cards are here. This is so cool. <laughs> oh, see, this one has writing on it: "Natural Power or World" for the Emperor. The Emperor is my card, by the way. Okay, we're waiting to get to the Sun card, which is going to give us the point. Oh, that looks like that might be pencil, though. I don't know if I can get that off. Okay, so the lovers, you know it's it's a Pam B or a Pam C because of the open eyes. Wow. These cards are mostly in really great shape. It is a Pam B. It's a Pam B. Beautiful. It's a Pam B because it's missing the squiggle, um, and it's uh, there's less detail in the um, uh, what do you call it in that? What do you call it? The banner. Um, so now I have to see if all the cards are here. But it's being a Pam B means that it was in the 1930s. So it makes sense that this is the. This is a 1940s stamp. So it was sold by um, the Simplex Publishing Company in Seattle, Washington. So they must have imported it. Did you get that? They must have imported it. So this slip case is damaged. It's missing the other side. But so, you know, pretty cool. Is it, do you think it's worth what I paid for it? Yes. Especially if all the cards are here. If they're not, then that's unhappy making. But a Pam B!